That was uh. <laughs> oh, you can sue some of that live freedom. That was the trailer from <laughs> the new hit on BET Plus. It's called B Boy Blues it Citizens. <laughs> it's a hit. It's streaming crazy. <laughs> Sometimes, man, all you need is another hit. Just another hit. Just people. What you do? What you do? B Boy Blues directed and EP'd and co written. Co written. Financed. Financed. He carried this baby in his arms and brought it to life and was able to. Get it placed on BET Plus. That's not all he's done. Have to be this man has been making money since the Mighty Ducks. Man, this dude has been putting it <laughs> down since 1992. Round of applause, man. That's what 1992 is. 30 years. 30 yeah. years ago. Not many of us could talk 30 years in this entertainment That's game. That's three decades, boy, 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 boy. Got boy. my sad card in 1987. You better act wow. like you know. I'm old. I know you saw him on Alien. I saw him on Alien. I don't know how he got that role. He must have needed to check. Listen, I don't know either. I know you saw him on Empire because he was the reason I was on Empire. Oh, my brother. They don't wow. talk about that part. Y'all wonder why I ride with this dude so cold. I want to welcome him back in person, the one and only Jesse Small Ass Citizen. I love you Hello. Man. Love you so too. So happy to be here. So happy to be here. Happy to have you, In brother. person. In person. Tired of those text messages yeah, whenever you man. want. Those when I want something, text messages. Shut your <laughs> ass up, Sway. How something. many times I done invited you right to my place, right up the street from him? Hey, check it. Ask Every Sway time. if he ever been to my place. You've been a million times. You an Uzi. What happened to you, Sway? What's up, Did Sway? You, first of all, he's not in town when he invites me. <laughs> <laughs> he invite me I'll just to be like, yeah, again. come over. I'll be like, over. and then he but shows I up there like, bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not there for a couple. <laughs> he ain't going to be there. So it got to the point when Jussie texts me, I hit him back, what, what you need? Shut up, Sway. And you got to know. Why he lying, though? Because it's birthday. Y'all birthday coming up. When's your birthday, Sway? <laughs> See what I mean? When's my birthday? <laughs> July. <laughs> yeah. Okay. June twenty first. <laughs> he gonna say. He, he probably gonna say that the date of my birthday is the party date because he just got the invitation to the party. He got oh, a party. So, oh, okay. <laughs> Jesse Small left celebrating his fortieth birthday. Yeah. Congrats. Man. Look at this 40. guy, man. Lost That's a lot of Man, I, there's so much I want to talk to you about. First yeah. and, and foremost, um, how's your spirit? My spirit is so. In such the season of gratitude, okay. like my my spirit is, I've never felt more more clear. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I've never felt more sober. I've never felt more. Um, I hope people don't take that out of context, but mm -hmm. I'm sure they will. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Boy, I was already but, about to follow you know up. What I'm that saying, one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, I've never felt healthier uh, and more grateful and more. I've never felt more blessed than than I feel now. So my spirit is, you know, is really good. I'm still, you know, still dealing with things, still, you know, having to, you know, I'm not shy to say that I am in therapy mm -hmm. as we all should be because a lot of stuff that happened over the last three years, obviously, but also just, you know, just life stuff. Yeah. You know, you gotta, yeah. you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to train your mind and not just train your body, mm -hmm. you know, to, to be healthy and to be, to be beautiful. So um, I'm really, really, I'm getting out of the idea of trying to convince or trying to um, hope that people see the truth of something or yeah. something like that. And I'm really just, I'm going where the love is. And that's why I'm Ooh. here. You won't see me everywhere. <laughs> I'm not doing a lot of press, yeah. but it's yeah. like, I'm going where the love is. And why shouldn't I? You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Why should we subject ourselves to to unnecessary pain or 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 salaciousness or whatever? It's like that's why I come home to family. Uh, Jesse Smollett, um, I'm curious. You choking up, Sway? You crying? Yeah, I'm a little. I'm a little. <laughs> I'm wavery right now, Jesse. <laughs> Tapped into a cord right there or something. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm always concerned. I'm always concerned with our people, and specifically, yeah. I'm always concerned with you. And I notice this. Um, this field we work in can be uh, heartless. Um, it could be ruthless. And it, it can, can be, be alienating. It could be alienating. You have all these people around you, but it's very, very alienating. And, you know, when something like, you know, we all know what happened. Well, we don't all know what happened, but we all know the, the scandal around it. Around the court um, case. Right. Yes. Uh, 
I'm I'm so it sounds so odd, but Lord knows if I could go back and and never go through any of this and never have my family or my close people to me ever have to experience what we've experienced, Lord knows that I would make sure that that, you know, happened. But and that they that we never went through what we've gone through. Uh but there's a part of me that one of my good friends <laughs> said, you know, you may think now, and he said this probably in like April of 2019, he said, you know, you may look at everything now and think that this is bad, but at the end of the day, you needed to mow your lawn so you could see all the snakes in your grass. Ooh. And sometimes, sometimes we, and again, it goes back to what I was saying when I was on the phone with y'all about family is so important to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm always looking in every space that I'm in to create that sort of same feeling that I get when I'm around my family, uh -huh. that safety, that, that un unapologetic love and sometimes it can stab you in your foot yeah. you know um mm. but uh i'm just so i'm just, I, I i say it often and i say it a lot and i'm just like i think that it's best to it's better to say thank you to god the universe the ancestors your friends your family too much mm -hmm. than to not say it enough so and i know from the depths of my soul the way that god has brought me through and continues to, you yeah. know. So I'm just uh, y'all hear me. Y'all will hear me say the words "grateful" a lot, and I really genuinely am. Jussie so. Smollett. Um, what's that? I though? love this fake audience, y'all. No, no, oh, Come on, man! Don't be pulling the curtain back. You're a director. This ain't nothing about the lighting and b-boy blues. Uh, <laughs> pulling back the curtain. curtain. <laughs> um, I would imagine, as I, I try to put myself in your shoes, mm -hmm. a couple of things. You know, you, you went through a lot of public ridicule. Oh, yeah. Yeah, from the same people the, that <laughs> that loved you and uplifted mm. you are the same folks that did not believe you. You know, there were a lot of folks who just to this day does not believe your story. How do you rectify that? How did you? Um, I don't. Yeah. I don't. Uh, there's a part of me that, you know, when I strip my, when I strip my ego, when I strip my my personal emotions about it, and my personal situation, I'm the way that it was served to everybody. I absolutely understand why people felt betrayed. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I put that in my song, "Thank You God," where I was just like. I really overstand the reason why y'all felt betrayed. They had my own people, thoughts going off the wall. That's right from LD to Don, I still got love for y'all. Mm -hmm. Because whatever they thought, they thought. And whatever the way that it was served, it was served. But that is also, I didn't know what was happening mm -hmm. then. I didn't know how, I, I didn't know how bad it was getting. And I also didn't think, for whatever reason, I genuinely thought that people were gonna be like, there's no way that he did some bullshit like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like, y'all know me. Like, y'all know that. And, and I'm thinking, oh, well, people's history should mean something. Mm -hmm. So they and, and it's very interesting when someone uses. When someone lies on you over and over and then they pull and you know what is the lie, but then you're forced to acknowledge the truths around the matter as well. Mm -hmm. And that's really painful as well. Cause it's easy to just be like, that's a bullshit lie into the fucking hoax. Fuck that. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, then they bring out drug stuff. Yeah. And then they bring and then you're like, ooh, I did do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, ooh, I did do that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's like, and you're sitting there and you're like, but this doesn't have anything to do with what y'all are saying that I did do that I didn't do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it is what it is. I I don't hold anybody. That's not entirely true. Okay. I do hold some people accountable for the things that they said, for the things that they did, for the ways that they reacted. Because half of those people should have picked up the fucking phone and called me mm -hmm. because mm. they had my number, you know, mm -hmm. and they didn't. But I also understand that we sometimes operate off of fear. And that when you're, when you're kind of, you know, the whole mission is to alienate you so that everybody, so that you are such, you are so just like vibrating in the wrong way and like all the shit around you is just wrong that people just have to step back. But I don't mind, I don't hold the people 
to anything that stepped back. I hold the people that went out there and said shit. Mm -hmm. I hold them to something. And not the people that don't know me, yeah. but the people that do know me, fuck out of here. Y'all know better than that. Yeah. And y'all did that. That was some PR bullshit. And you know who you are. And I will not name names, and I love everybody, but I don't like everybody. You don't like everybody. And that's just real. Jesse Smollett. Um, <clears throat> there was a few entertainers. Um, I know Dave Chappelle with one of his specials. <laughs> he saw it was funny to you. You didn't take it personal. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, edit. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you know, what's so funny is that my nickname growing up was Juicy. <laughs> Uh -huh. I'm like, nigga, you taking my fucking nickname. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? <laughs> but, you know, uh, that's a that's a special situation. Um, I don't know how much I should say about that. I will say that, I will say this. I have seen Dave since. Okay. I have seen Dave since. Okay. And, um, I didn't run up on no stage mm -hmm. like that dude at the Hollywood Bowl. You didn't right. do that? Didn't. That I wasn't you? That I wasn't Jesse. I, I thought that was, okay, so that, that, that was in the rumor mill that that was Jesse Smollett no, that did that, no, tackled him, no? No, no, could you imagine? Could you imagine? Could you imagine, look, I, and look, just to be clear, I'm not saying anything about the whole Will things. I want to make that clear before they try right, to, right, I'm right, talking right. about the Hollywood the Bowl, Bowl thing. Yeah. I'm just like, yo, if Will got all that stuff, imagine if I ran up on the stage, they'd be oh, like, yeah. bruh, and you're done again. <laughs> <laughs> and see. <laughs> Damn. Here's the cherry. I'm like, yo. So, no, but no. But you and Dave seen each other since. I've seen him since. And uh, that's that's all I'm going to say. I mean, there's... there's uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Shout out to Dave Chappelle. Kendrick Lamar did a beautiful video with I Heart Part Five, you mm -hmm. know, and um, there was an interpolation, I guess, that of a facial expression. Your sure. face, your mm -hmm. image was seemed like it was fused in. What was your thoughts about how did you process? How did you interpret that? I haven't seen honestly. I haven't seen the whole video, and that's the honest to God truth. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes I don't watch things just so that I can say truthfully that I haven't seen it. Okay, <laughs> but okay. I certainly have. Obviously, I know about, about it, it, and I've yeah. seen it. I mean, he's brilliant. So I don't. I don't entirely know how to interpret it. In, interpret it. Mm -hmm. uh, interpret it. I don't know how exactly to interpret it, but I think that he's a phenomenal artist. So I just, you know. I don't I don't really have any personal thoughts about it as much as I think that he's a brilliant artist and you know he's he's uh that's really all I can say about that. That's all you can say about yeah. that. This guy's been in training, man. Just he's small man, I've been training to, myself. Yeah, you understand I the <laughs> emotional like like discipline that is taken that it takes to yeah. how many videos I have in my phone from February of 2019 where I'm just going off and I'm just like this is bullshit and y'all know what this is why are y'all fucking falling for the banana and the tailpipe in this way I know that it's like why now why is this so easy to believe and, and but then of course then you send it to your people and they're like don't don't put that out don't uh -huh. you're too you're too angry you're too defensive you're too this but looking back there's a part of me that wishes that I had done what I wanted to do of going out there. I didn't want to do an interview. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to get too deep, you know, because I I love and respect Robin Roberts. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I did not want to do that interview. That interview wasn't for me. That was for my character. Mm. You know? What do you mean? Just meaning that, oh, God, how deep do I get? If I'm going to get deep, I might as well get deep with my family. Um, uh yeah, I have to be very, very honest here in that I wanted to, I found myself, you know, I hadn't watched the interview at all. Uh, I hadn't watched the interview at all until we were on trial. Uh -huh. And I had to watch it because they were trying to use the interview as evidence of lies or whatever. Um, so I had to watch it and I watched it and I was mortified. Uh -huh. I mean, I was mortified. I mean, I cringed at just the, Every single word that I said in that interview was the truth. But there was a certain level of performative uh -huh. nature that came from it because I didn't want to be there. And I was so angry and so offended that I had to go on national television and explain something that happened to me. And it was so political and it was all of those things. And I found myself... 
I found myself dealing with my own internalized homophobia. Okay. As an openly gay black man who leads with his blackness, I found myself dealing with that, and I'm embarrassed and I'm a little bit ashamed to say that, meaning that I wanted to, I wanted to represent all of us that had been assaulted based on who we are, um, but for the people that didn't have the platform that I had. I mm-hmm. wanted to say all of the things that people should hear from people who have been through this. Um, but I also didn't want to be associated with people who had been attacked. Mm. Mm. I felt like somehow, like I want to, I want to, I want to play roles. I want to play boxer. I want to play, you know, you know, superheroes and all that type of shit. And 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 then I felt like I'm so, I'm 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 genuinely sorry to say this, but this is the way that I felt. I don't feel that way anymore. But I know that that's the way that I felt. I felt like. I felt like I just became a faggot that got his ass beat. Mm. So, or at least I felt like that's what people saw me as. Mm -hmm. And so I was trying so hard to like the posturing of he hit me and then I hit his ass back. I was just like, oh my God, nigga, what are you doing? You look fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm. But everything that I said was the God to honest, honest to God truth. But it's just the way that it was. Yeah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm I'm sorry to my people that I felt that way, mm-hmm. but that is so, that is a part of a bigger conversation that we should probably have at some point. Yeah, mm-hmm. about the internalized homophobia that we're kind of conditioned with from the moment that we get on this earth, mm-hmm. whether you end up being gay or not, and it's something that I feel like a lot of us fight with and grapple with, and in order to explain certain things and explain certain whys, you kind of have to be fully honest with yourself about all of that. And that's just me being honest. So um, am I ashamed of that, that I felt that way? Absolutely. Do I feel like I'm, I'm better than anyone else that has been assaulted? Absolutely fucking not. Mm-hmm. But at that time, I was just so embarrassed that it happened. I did not want anybody. So that's why when people were just like, oh, he he did this so that he could, he did this so that he could get attention. And I'm just like, first of all, I've never been a person that looked for attention. But if I was, like, I'm an actor, a director, yeah. a writer, a creator. He was on Mighty Ducks in 92. You know what I'm saying? Like, quack, yeah. quack, motherfuckers. <laughs> if I were to do something, it would not be to look like a victim. It would be to look like, if anything, someone's strong and i found myself being like yo but i'm strong but i fought back and all of that type of stuff and it was like it actually doesn't make you more or less of a human being Mm -hmm. regardless of what happened Mm -hmm. and so we just didn't know what to expect we didn't know what was coming we didn't know who was going to lie we didn't there was just nothing to point us to that until it happened and we were just dumbfounded and looking back there were so many things that we could have done to intercept it, but we just didn't know what was coming. So that's that. Mm. <clears throat> and I won't, we're gonna we're gonna move on. But you you said something really interesting because I I used to I used to get on the radio. And I, I had to tell you I was perplexed of why so much attention is being paid. And let's minim I minimize it to this actor, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You're more than that. But Thank why you. why you know I'm just you know why is is the whole world, world you used to say. I said, the whole world is coming down on this guy, on this actor, when we got so much other things we could be concerned about. You know what bothers me more than, it's interesting, what bothers me more than someone that says, that motherfucker guilty, he's a liar, he he did this. What bothers me more than that, those people are irrelevant to me at this point. Mm-hmm. Fuck them. They're going to believe what they're going to believe. What bothers me more are the people that are saying, that will say something like, well, even if he did do it, X, Y, Z. I think what you have to realize is, is that for someone like me that represented his entire, my entire career, my, but, my, but more importantly, my entire life, along with my family, represented social justice, represented equity and equality and all of these types of things. And we, we're fighters and we're, we're, we fight with love so deeply. And this is what we preach because it's what we believe. It's like finding out that someone is exactly the opposite of who they claim to be. Mm -hmm. And so 
I'm a fr- if I had done this, I'd be a piece of shit. Yeah. And I don't think that that is, I don't think that that is kind of, that's not really questionable. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when people are like, yes, there's a lot of other stuff happening, but that would be really, and again, it's something that I wanted to say, if I had done something like this, it would mean that I stuck my fist in the pain of black Americans in this country for over 400 years. Mm-hmm. We're not even talking about in Africa because that's, that's an even deeper, larger conversation. It would mean that I stuck my fist in the fears of the LGBTQ community all over the world. Mm-hmm. I'm not that motherfucker. Never have been, don't need to be. Didn't need to have a, some sort of rise in his career. I was on the up and up. I was coming from New York, from doing a table read for my dream role in a Broadway show. I had just optioned the rights to the autobiography, the authorized autobiography of Alvin Ailey. I had oh. just, all of these things that I was <clears throat> creating, there would be no reason for me to do some dumb, corny shit like that. Uh But people are gonna believe what they believe, and what I have to do is, I have to keep working. You have to keep working, and that's- And what I know for sure is, every single thing that I auditioned for during that period, I lost. They took it from me. But every single thing that I created, myself- It's being created. It's being created. Never again will anybody be able to pull my life from under me like a rug. There you Never go. Again. Just you small left. Come on, man. Onward. Onward. Uh, and, uh, and, and so right now, you we play freedom because you're free right now. <laughs> Why you say right now? Damn. Right now. I mean, you know, that was good because last time I saw you, you weren't. Right, yeah. <laughs> and now you are. Uh, your stint behind bars, how did you make it through that? What was your saving grace? God. Yeah. And my family. Um, I fasted. I was there for six and a half days. I fasted for six and a half days. Uh, my lawyer, shout out to Ninye, but he was lying when he said that I was fasting for Lent. Uh-huh. I wasn't fasting for Lent. I was fasting because that's what we do in my family. Like we fast for, right. for clarity, for I have never in my life, at least in my adult life, been as clear of mind as I was for those six and a half days. And it was almost like when they told me that I was getting out, what I was doing is I was fasting until I found out whether or not I was gonna be in there for those five and a half months. Yeah, I just wanted to know what my life was about to look like. So I was fasting, getting, and I had been prepping, you know, my, my family, most wonderful human beings, I live and die for those You got people. an amazing family. Yes, Let me God. say that for the oh record. You got Jake, an amazing, oh Justice Smollett got an amazing oh family. Yeah, every, yeah. The mom, when the I mom. see the mom, I'm at attention, like waiting for my <laughs> mom. Let me tell you something, mommy yes. don't go nowhere. Yes. Mommy is a house cat, okay? Mm-hmm. But she was like, watch me stay in LA and my baby is in Chicago. Like mm-hmm. she, she did not play. And, um, mm, um, sorry. Uh, yeah. so being, um, being, being behind bars, uh, I fasted for six and a half days and there was a part where they told me that I was getting out. I, Lord knows I wanted to get out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm in the fucking psych ward on, you know. In, in, Did they have in, you in a jacket? No, 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 okay. no. They didn't have me in a jacket, but they had me. I was sleeping on a, on like a, like a restraint bed. Mm-hmm. I wasn't restrained, and I have to keep it real. Everybody, you know, um, uh, uh, was inside was very kind, and when I left, I thanked them all. I said, I don't know what y'all think. Either way, but the fact that you didn't let me know what you think either way and you just showed me respect, I'm grateful for, mm. mm-hmm. you know. Um, mm. But, but yeah, I was there in six and a half days and there was a part of me when I was coming out, when they told me that I was coming out, I was so grateful and so glad to get out. But there was a part of me that was like, I don't want to lose how I feel right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to lose... I don't want to lose that clarity. the clarity. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go back out there and pick up this and pick up this, pick up this, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And somehow forget how I feel right no. now. Because right now I am as grounded in me as possible. And it's just, there's something about being in there and having no choice but to surrender. Surrender mm-hmm. not to the system, not to a judge or a bunch of old white men 
ironically explaining to you about the history of hate crimes and, yeah. and lynching, and you're sitting there and being like, what? Who the fuck are you? And, but you're surrendering to yourself, and you're surrendering to, you're just left there with you, your thoughts, and these walls. I believe that the prison system needs to be dismantled. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is, as I'm sitting in there, I'm like, I know that I didn't do this, but you'd have to be, you have to be a, a different kind of person to really search and try to find the redemption in this. Mm. That place is not meant for redemption. Yeah. That place is not meant to make you come out better than when you went in. Mm -hmm. And the prison system needs to be dismantled. I mean, I will say that, th and, and somehow I feel like maybe that's one of the reasons why. But then I look at it and I'm just like, I'm not one of those dudes that needed something like this to happen to understand the plight of my people. <laughs> yeah. right? You know what I'm saying? You like, knew I'm that not before the you went in there. I knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. not some ignorant fool that, that, that doesn't understand the history of all of these things that these people somehow tried to flip and act like they needed to explain to me. Um, but what I do know is for myself, I needed a moment of clarity. Yeah. And I have a moment of clarity and I am Killing holding it. on to that that which I have found. Jossie Smollett, man. I'm a I didn't I didn't I didn't anticipate talking this much about <laughs> I didn't it. think so either, but I'm but, glad we did. Man, I'm glad we did though. Um, so now I ain't got to talk to nobody else. Leave me alone. <laughs> well, there, there were a few other questions. <laughs> I, I okay, shoot, that, that, shoot, brother, shoot. You know. Um you said you understand, you didn't understand then what was happening. Now you have a better understanding of what happened to you. What do you believe it is? What do you mean? You said when you, when you, you couldn't see how big this would become, right? And well, you because didn't... I was shut off from, when I say I was shut off from the world, I was shut off from the world. I mean, like, my family, <laughs> my family took my phone. I did not have my phone. They took, I was not allowed to get on social media. So I was you not couldn't allowed. see the swell that was no, happening, the scrutiny, no. the whole and they, they protected me from it okay. in a really beautiful way. And then, I, and then probably about a year later, I, th I was somewhere with my family for my older sister Jazz's birthday. And I just, for the first time, decided to Google myself. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Worst idea ever. ever. Yeah. And there's my baby. And and uh, I really saw what it was. And, I, and it was so painful because I was like, ooh, he said that about me? Oh, my God. Oh, she said that? What? You know, you had people, hi, baby. Brandy, Brandy Evans, Evans just walked in. in. Brandy Evans just walked in. Brandy Evans just walked in. The star P Valley. <laughs> and the star B Boy Look, Blues B -boy now B -boy streaming Blues. on BET Plus. Look, your hair attached to his hat. You wanna get that? There you go. Brand, Brandy, how you been, Brandy? I am good. We I did this on the phone good. before. We didn't do this in person, we huh? Did not. Damn, you look great in person, Lord, too. Yeah. That woman is beautiful. Oh, my God. <laughs> that All woman that energy is beautiful. coming up in here. Thank you. Uh, Jesse, we'll continue this another we'll time. We'll continue this another time. Okay. I'm so glad. Girl, you came in right at the right time. I we was been. getting real deep. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm loving is the rise and the rise and the truth. The I phoenix. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesse is the phoenix. Yeah, but I'm tired of being burned. So okay. <laughs> yes. We well, know. Too, okay. Hey, but you you some uh, somebody was just saying something. Um, oh shit! Somebody somebody just said something to me. The reason why you uh, what do you say? You can, if you can't deal with it, you got to go through it or something. Mm -hmm. something Let me tell you something. I swear I'm not trying to name drop. Yeah. Reverend Jesse Jackson uh -huh. told me just like this. He said, he said, don't ask God to get you over mm -hmm. this. Ask God to get, get you, you through, through it. it. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Look at you now. You and lost some weight. You leaned I out. Did, yes. Come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. You got it working out. <laughs> you got one got of the that top. Brandy Evans you know, body. You that, got, uh, <laughs> that's, that six and a half day fast. That was like a fast <laughs> if I can. B-Boy Blues. <laughs> B-Boy Blues, one of the highest streaming uh, shows on BET+. Yes, sir. Oh, God, yeah. Let's play that trailer. Did we play the trailer already? Yes, we played it. We played the trailer. We got uh, one of the star, two of the stars here. Yes. That's right. Crazy. Right? Damn Brandy right. Evans and the one and only Heather, Heather B. B. Yes, Heather B. Ain't that wow. crazy?
We I'm sat next to each, well, behind each other at the first New York premiere. And I was like, hi, we interviewed you on the Sway the Morning show. And she's like, oh my gosh. I was like, yeah. But it was over the phone. Yep. It was over the phone. Yep. Yeah. How did you get on board with this project? This project? Did Jesse just approach you or? Yeah, you know what? Yeah. This is my friend, friend. Yes. Like, like, they don't know that. They don't, don't know. know like, that. literally back in the day, mm-hmm. Poison Hearts Club. That's right. Just, I was the only girl in the video. And I was like, who is this cute boy? <laughs> I love Jesse. Jesse has been my ride or die when my, when my ex husband left me. I was literally at Jesse's house having taco night. He was cooking for me. He was like, you got yes. one second to cry it out. Get it out and you get back up. So I love my I friend. Love he has been so there much. through mm. everything with me. Yes, so that's him. Hungry. I slept yeah. on his floor, I think, twice. <laughs> 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 on the hardwood. You slept yeah. on Jesse's floor? Wait, Absolutely. let me tell you, this is a story. When everything was going down, people didn't realize that, you know, I had to sell my house. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was, that's, and of course, you know, you can think to yourself, okay, motherfucker, but you had a house. Right. And I'm grateful for it, but I busted my ass for that right. house. You know Facts. what I'm saying? And, 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 and my mom lived in that house. Facts. Right? So to have to sell it was really painful. Heather came over. Mm. Heather came over to my house and it was completely empty because we had emptied out the whole house Mm -hmm. because we were selling it. And she literally slept on the floor with me. And just, we just, we just, like I have Mm. such good, wonderful friends around Mm -hmm. me. Anytime that Mm -hmm. I could possibly I'm never going to be able to pay my friends and family back for the love and the 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 unwavering support that's never straddling of the nope. fence cuz I know motherfuckers came after y'all yeah. for support. I know that they did <laughs> and y'all stood by it anyway cuz you knew the truth. Yeah. And I'm just so grateful so I I try my best just to tell these stories not to have people have a cool story to right. know but just because there are people in the world that are shitty people but there are mostly people and I started bending a little bit over these last years I started I used to think that every most people are really good and they're fighting against the evil in the world and then I started to think no most people are fucking evil and they're fighting to appear to be good, good. Mm. Mm. I still kind of feel that way. <laughs> you gotta let that breathe. That might be a gym. That's a gym, no, though. Most yeah. say that again. <laughs> most people are evil. Most people are in a used, to be. Well, I used to think that most people were good fighting against evil. Now, and then I started to feel like most people were bad fighting to simply appear good. to be good. And. The, I'm so blessed because Oof. the people that are no longer around are not needed mm-hmm. in my life. Amen. And so I recognize things for what they are. I'm not the type of person that, like, I'm not the type of person where if I don't mess with you no more that I got to go and, you know, do you dirty and be malicious and try to make yeah. it where you can't work, you can't yeah. get a bag, you can't, I'm not going to be that type of person. But I'm not fucking with you. Yeah. Big Sean no said, more. Sean, Big Sean made that song, right? Big Sean I don't wrote that song. With you. Um, so I, yes. So, yeah. but Brandy, we have been. Brandy was my dancer for my very first EP, The Poison Hearts Club, the yeah. very first music video yeah. that wow. I ever did, and that was like 12, 13 years ago. Crazy. And we have been friends ever yeah. since. I have watched her go through it she has watched me go through it we have been with each other through relationships good relationships mm-hmm. bad relationships mm. good breakups bad breakups because you know, there are such thing as good breakups yeah. too mm-hmm. really um career highs career lows she was she was just starting to rise really rise as a known actor mm-hmm. when my whole thing happened and the way that this child went so hard <laughs> there were times where i saw it and i was like b i'm like you might want to chill a little bit. She's like, fuck that. It's These not motherfuckers ain't coming for my friend. I'm like, baby, like, I need you to keep on getting roles. And you're like, <laughs> you're adding people that you don't need to add. She's like, fuck that. Mm-hmm. So it's just that, that, but I, I always keep telling everybody, like, I hope that y'all know that I would be there exactly the same way for you. Absolutely. If, if you, yeah. if you needed it in a, in a heartbeat. 
So be, because of you, I got to meet Dr. Angela Davis. So to have them on the show, and you got to understand who they are. Right. Sitting here speaking on and your behalf. It. And respect it. You know, to have them come out and be on this show and talk out like that was amazing. You yes. Know? And here's the thing. They are not fools. Oh, come on. Hmm. They are not silly, frivolous people. Mm -mm. Yeah. They don't care about numbers on Instagram. They don't care about ratings. Uh -huh. They don't care about any of those things. They are here for the truth. Right. They are here for the right thing. So that also should be proof of I don't have idiots around me. They don't yeah. just show up you know for what shit. I'm like, it's a reason. You know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, you know, and 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 so many, yeah. Yeah. I I I I am so grateful for Angela and Fa aside from my family, of yeah. course, Angela and Fanya and 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 Patrice and and Gina Belafonte and all of these incredible black women, y'all. Mm -hmm. I say this, this is not my first time saying this. I'm not saying this because I got into some trouble and black women saved me. Mm -hmm. I have always said Black women have always been my savior, have always been, have always made me feel like I was theirs, mm. never made me feel less than. Yeah. Mm. And so now to then be like, when the whole world turns against you and the people that rally around you are black women, and it means the world to me. And it, it, it means the world to me. So I'm grateful. And, and again, I will say thank you as until I am blue in the face. Absolutely. Jussie Smollett is happening right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Brandy Evans has joined us too. Yep, yep. B-Boy Blues up? available on BET+. Plus. I, I did mention P-Valley because it's back and I, and, yes. I, and I enjoy the show. But let's talk B-Boy Blues. Yes. Okay. B-Boy Blues, why was it important to make this project in your opinion? First of all, I'm going to be there for my friends. So I started there and okay. I knew how, it imp how important it was to have this story told. Michi is that black girl that mm -hmm. I love. Thank you. Love Thank you. I love that she was so different from Mercedes. Mm -hmm. And yes. she she rocks all these natural hairstyles. If you know Brandy, Michi is more like Brandy. Okay. Because natural hair, my, my hairstylist Sasha is going to always put this hair together. Natural. That's right, Sasha. What, what black girl Hello. do you not know that's switching <laughs> it up? Yes, that's my friend. And so I really <laughs> love that Jesse was just so open, like, boom, let's do this, let's do that. He, he let us just be who we are authentically. And then it was just fun and beautiful. I feel, I call it, honestly, the um, the Black Gay Love Jones. I mm -hmm. love it. I thought it was beautiful. <laughs> it was Jones. beautifully shot. I just I just yes. felt beautiful in it. And Shout the story out to was so Jody, necessary. Mm. Mm -hmm. our DP. Yes. yes Gorgeous. Yes, yes, I yes, loved, yes. I loved it. And then it's just that that friend that you can see, that, that relationship between her and Mitchell. Mm -hmm. Oh, just. And that they need each other. Yes. She's gonna. Yes. She and Jean are the ones that's gonna tell it like it is. They're the voice yep. of reason. Because mm -hmm. when you're in love, there is no voice of reason. Mm -hmm. So we have just a phenomenal cast. Shout out to James Earl Hardy, yes. yeah. who wrote the book series B Boy Blues, who allowed us to, you know, take this on and bring it, bring it to the people. Samson McCormick, who's one of the yes. just uh, an iconic, Dope. you know, st still young in his. I think Samson is like in his late thirties, but he is. Wow. Really? Samson has wow. been doing it. One of the the first gay man to sell out Howard Theater, um, and he's been a part of the project forever. Madie Hill Scott and a, yes. like Madie Hill Scott. I mean, this black woman was eight pushing, months pregnant, about to deliver. Running and around. Was on the set. Yes. yes. On the set. Yes. People were dedicated. How, we, what, mm -hmm. what kind of response have you received from the LGBTQ plus community? Very good, Sway. Yes. yes. <laughs> they clapped to that. Oh, Ooh, man. I, Go, I lost Sway. sleep over that last night. <laughs> He's like sure. LGBTQIA element on KQIS. <laughs> Very good. Um, it's been wonderful. Yeah. Okay. It's been wonderful. I've seen people come to me and just be like, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for representing. Thank you for giving us such a beautiful, timeless, the, my favorite word that I've been hearing is timeless. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I wanted to, we all did, I wanted to create a, a film 
that could be up there with my favorite films. You know, like I, I love Love Jones, and mm-hmm. I love I love Boomerang, and mm-hmm. I love Pretty Woman, mm. and 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 all of those great uh, uh, Claudine. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah, of yeah. these Good great one. love stories that mahogany. Um, Oh Ooh. my God! Ooh. Oh my God! Come on! I had to throw that in there. And so, <laughs> so, so that you know, we wanted to create a timeless love story. I remember talking to uh, talking to Jody Williams, who is one of the greatest DPs of all time, cinematographers. He worked on that little show I used to be on. Mm-hmm. He, <laughs> I was I, on it too. You were. Thank you. <laughs> I've never. Brandy didn't um, know that. Uh, <laughs> yes, he was on it a couple times. <laughs> More, more than it. twice, yeah. thrice. Oh, Jussie got me um, on it. I love more it. than ow, you yes. hear that? <laughs> um, uh, 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 and and I've never worked with any other cinematographer okay. on all of my music videos. Hurt people, freedom, catch your eye. Like they were all done by Jody. Love it. Uh, oh wow. Yeah. So so. The next film that I'm doing in November that I'm directing is also like we're doing it in November because that's when Jody is available. Because that's that is my you know. brother, and. Also, we're starting to see more and more black cinematographers in the industry, which is really important. Jody is is such a phenomenal cinematographer, but also my brother. What's I Jody's mean, last name? Jody Williams. Joe, Joe Williams. Jody Williams. He and texted you one night. He said he met you, and he, he texted shot, you one you night. Know he him. shot you. He shot. He shot. He. You know him. He um, uh, uh, he was working when we did Empire. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jody. Th- yes. Okay. Jo- but I think that Jody was was camera operator back then. Back then. And then he became But he I became shook hands deeper. with everyone. You did. Like I do of that. Of course. You yeah, man yeah. of the people. Yeah, Come yeah. I now. shook hands with everyone. Real Come quick. Okay, go ahead, Heather. I, I want to have her to talk about her role. Well, mm-hmm. I wanted to ask Jesse a question because you specifically said black cinef- cinematographers. Why is that important and does a director have the I hate this word, the power to hire a black cinema. How does that work? I don't work? know if directors have the power, if all directors have the power. I had the power, and I mean that with all the hu- humility in my heart. Right, <laughs> with a right, little right. Bit of, a little bit of, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of brag. Right, um, right. I had the power yeah. to do that because it was my film. Like, meaning, oh, and gosh. I don't mean that it was, you know, it was all of our film, but I just mean that I, before we licensed this to BET Plus, we, I was the studio the financier with my business partner. I was I was the co-writer with James Earl Hardy. I was the director Got and it. producer. So I was able to absolutely pick the crew Long. of who I wanted. Right. That's why it's like I had a black cinematographer. My first AD is a black, black. woman. Yep. My second AD is a black woman. Mm-hmm. The, um, the, the, our sound engineer is a same gender loving uh, uh, Italian woman. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? The, it We had, my script supervisor is an Asian man. You know what I'm saying? We had all of us represented in a really beautiful way. And no shade to, you know, white men all over the world, but there was one that was working with us. And it was interesting to see that he was the minority in the group, mm-hmm. which is something that I don't usually see, but it was all love. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like we were all in there together and we were all working for the common good of making a great film yeah and i do want to see lord knows i just want to see black people in positions that yeah. that we need more of we need more black investigative journalists yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah. these bloggers are really amazing now i need for you to go and become investigative journalists you know because you're not gonna the, some people are not gonna investigate Escape. stories the way that yes. we might Headlines investigate only. it on our own yeah. they don't understand the layers and the all of those the the, the complications of it mm-hmm. all mm-hmm. you know so and again that ain't no shade to nobody else that ain't no shade for five but right. what i'm saying <laughs> is <laughs> what i'm saying is is that we i know people that find the crews that they are comfortable with. I am comfortable with certain people that just so happen to be, yeah. you be know, very diverse. Be of my hue. Yeah. 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 You know? Nothing wrong with that. So What's that's that. that. We were run by, we were run by, really we were put together and, and run by black women and mostly black women and gay black men. And Jody. <laughs> and Jody. And Jody. And Jody. <laughs> okay. Brandy, uh, it's great to have you on the show. You're yes, doing yes. so excellent. And congratulations oh, on so everything. Much. Congratulations. I love, I love bless your Instagram. up. Bless up. Take bless care up. of your mom. For All real. of you. Yes. yes. I can't believe that man left. Listen, his thank loss. you. I would. 
thank you so much for Where, What camera can we look? What camera can I look no, at? Ty, Ty, what camera? Come, come. Thank you. Thank With you. your dumb ass. <laughs> <laughs> Silly hoe. Tricks are for kids. <laughs> All right, man. Do you do you talk to anybody from that little old show we used to do anymore? Of course. I was okay. just with Taraji the day before yesterday in Atlanta. Hey, Taraji. That is my okay. heart. Okay. My heart. We had the best time. We went to brunch with the some of the. We went to brunch with Tim and uh, oh, uh, who plays yeah. Mitchell and mm-hmm. Landon. Who well, plays that's our shampoo Jean. in there too. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. Listen. Let's talk oh, about that's it. what y'all should know too. Thank you for reminding me mm-hmm. of that. Taraji supported the film. You know, oh. Taraji, Taraji gave, I, I, I mean, I can say this, she's in the thank yous. Taraji gave me, gave me money for the film, wow. you know, Booth. and, mm-hmm. and so I put in, I put in her TPH project, so yeah. product. So you'll see like Mitchell washing Raheem's hair yeah, with the TPH shampoo yes. or him spraying the, 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 the curl moisturizer right. on him. She is, oh, I love that woman. It is unexplainable how much I love that woman. And she is literally one of my best friends in the whole world. And I love her. And I'm always just, I just, I just, I love her. And yes, I talk to her. I talk to her at, I mean, we talk all the time. That's That's my girl. That's good. Um, I still talk to Yaz. Mm -hmm. I still, you know, I, I, I talked to him just the other day. I still talk to a lot of my my family from there. Some uh-huh. I don't. Some um and but the the ones that I was really close to, I still I still close absolutely, with absolutely. absolutely. And shout out to Mona Scott too. And shout Whew. out to Mona listen, as, as well. And I and I listen, I just posted a tribute to Mona yesterday. I was feeling I was just feeling really emotional yesterday mm-hmm. and I was just I Gemini. Hey, that listen, and Gemini cancers are even worse. <laughs> so Oh damn. So right. So, Heather, you got to go to Urban View? I got to go to work, y'all. Okay, okay. Thank y'all. Wait, Love y'all. Before you Wait. go anywhere, we have to give you a shout. Mm-hmm. Heather B. is an actor. Yes. Aww, thank you, Jess. Heather B. will give me a lot of credit for her performance. I do not deserve that credit. I only made you be you. You are a phenomenal actor. People are not ready for 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 you as Aunt Ruth. They're not yes. ready for all of the other things that you are about to do. But you are an actor, and I need for you to step into that. And I need for you. And I've been telling everybody, but I get a chance to say this to you on air. I've been saying this to everybody. I need for y'all to step back and take a moment and remember what you did and where you are, and the fact that you are so such a wonderful human being. But you are also a phenomenal artist. Mm, and I and agree with that. I just want you to embrace that and live yes. in that. I embrace this with Brandy. Mm. Yes. Because you, you are just, you it. You, you it. Thank you. Yeah. I need to hug. Go ahead and cry, Heather. And re- Give shut up, hug, Sway. <laughs> but, but real quick, though, too, and all of this, literally, not just from being family and friends, is he literally called me to do a voiceover. He needed a New York radio voice and said, I want you to do a voiceover. And I was like, sure, just send it to me. He said, do it by your phone. We're not even in contact with each other, you know, doing contact. Do it on your phone and send it to me. And that's how that conversation and God blessing and opportunity came from. You never know how never know. how God is going to allow you to step into it. Because God is the only one that's mm-hmm. in control. Amen. Yes. I think that's a great way to go about our day, right Amen. on this high frequency, Amen. this great vibration. My brother, I hope, My you, brother. I hope you enjoy coming home today. I yes. love It's good to be home. home. It's Ooh. good. good to I am you. finally <laughs> home. <laughs> Yo, we're going to end with freedom. We're going to play freedom as our yes, last song. Freedom. Shout out to all of the, the young people on the soundtrack. Duran Bernard curated an amazing uh-huh. soundtrack. We got Tehran Austin. We got Ashley Wood. We just got phenomenal, phenomenal artists. We're trying to get this soundtrack together, trying to release it for y'all because it's amazing. Ooh, so yeah. just check out the music also. And uh, I got some shit coming too soon. Okay. Can't wait to hear it. Tell your family I love them. I will. Start they from know your mother and trickle Jake down. And, to- and Journey's here tomorrow? Journey's supposed to come yes, tomorrow, Journey. but we ain't got the confirmation, so depend on what Journey I'll decides share. to do. So if Journey decides to come tomorrow, then we'll have Journey tomorrow. You know how that goes, right? Brandy Evans. Thank Brandy you. Evans. Thank y'all so much. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Have you on the show. Thank Congratulations you. on all your success. You're Thank you so awesome much. awesome thespian. Thank you. You're awesome, okay? Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. Hopefully, Journey Smollett will be on the show with us. Um, we all have other uh, special guests. Uh, hit up Heather B at the happy hour, WHB. Tracy G is at It's Tracy G. I'm at Real Sway across the board. 
We will have this interview up on Sway's Universe, the YouTube channel. You can go on demand at Sirius XM. Jussie, if they want to hit you, how can they hit you? Uh, at Jussie Smollett. Okay. I love y'all very, very much. Thank you so, so much. Brandy Evans. What's up, y'all? At The Real Brandy with two E's, y'all. My mama was extra. There it is. Shout okay. out to Nolan Kelly, my barber, and, and my barber, and John Cotton, my barber, and Nolan, who did the hair on the thing. He said to shout him out, you know, Chicago all the way. Like, there it is, Chi-Town. On that note, citizens, we have nothing. <laughs> Damn. Left to say. Oh,